Doki. The first two bars are pretty straightforward, though there is one thing that you should really focus on, and that would be to play certain notes with palm mutings and the others without the palm mutings, and that gives a wide dynamic range to this part. And from the third bar, it goes to triplets instead of uh, eight notes. And not only it goes to triplets, but in between there are some rests notes and that makes it really difficult rhythmically. It's very unusual, so again you would have to use your ear as well before you would sit down. Just try to understand uh, the, the feel, the vibe to the part and then start to put the whole thing together. Okay, and there's also a lot of phrasings, but let's just go through all the details now. This pentatonic lick starts with the slide up on the A string. I usually start uh, sliding up with the ring finger and then along the way I switch fingers. Doesn't really make a difference sound wise, but to me it just feels more natural that way. So just try to find your own way. So the lick starts with an alternate picking. It's the first two bars we're talking about now. So it's down, up, down, up. Down, up, down. That's the picking pattern. Also, the first note is open and the second two are palm muted. Then it opens up and then a palm mute again. And then open up again. And end it with a palm mute. And that's what's being repeated. So. Repeat it from the D string, 12th fret, plus with the addition of the octave on the G string at the end, with an upstroke. That's the first part. Learn this one first. The next two bars are getting a little more tricky because of the triplets uh, I mentioned. This is how it sounds. This is the first part. So there's from the 14th a slide up to the 16th and then slide back to the 14th and then pull off to the 12th and then to the 14th with the palm mute back to the 14th with an open upstroke palm muted 14th to the D string and an open G 12th. That's the first part. And then so this part starts with a little bending, just quickly bend up and then release it. And after that you pull off that note, so it sounds like this. And then you go down to the 14th on the A string. And then upstroke on the 12th, bend that note as well. So same way, kind of. And then a pull off. And then a down on the 12th. And then up on the 12th. And the heavy vibrato there. Well, this part is the most difficult part of the solo, as you would imagine, and on a technical level. And it's because there's a lot of unusual picking patterns and the fingering positions and everything is just very typical Dimebag. And what would really help to learn this more efficiently is that if you would take them into small fragments and pieces, learn those pieces first and then put them all together. That's actually the most efficient way uh, and method to learn anything that's new. Take them into pieces, understand them all and then put it together. So let's do that now. The first piece would be this one. In itself it's already pretty difficult because it starts with triplets and in the first bar of this part there is 16th notes as well. You start with the downstroke and the pull off, and then down up, typical dime bag. That's the first sixth note. 
and then after the first six notes you pick the 17th on the B string and make a pull off to the 12th so together and end it on the 15th of the G string with the down stroke so and last but not least there's the 16th note part that starts with an up stroke on the E string hammer on to the 17th down stroke on the G 15th and then an up stroke on the 12th of the B so the first two notes are the same that's the mind there together with the two piece and then it gets a little more simpler down pull off down up pull off down and the next part I would practice alone itself and that would be this one From the 13th to the 12th it's a downstroke and a pull off and then you come down to the G 15th with a downstroke and then a 14th with an upstroke go down chromatically but from now on it's like arrow two notes and that's the sequence you have to repeat chromatically going down and at the end you hit the bar don't hold the bar hold it a little loose and pull it upwards if it's this position this is a fun little bluesy part and it actually starts one bar before and uh, the eighth bar sliding up on the G string to the 17th fret with the ring finger and then you go with an upstroke to the E 14th and then to the 17th and that note you bend up but just half a note that's the bluesy feel so the lick would look like this up down up down on the 17th up on the 14th and then down on the 14th the E string and then up on the B string 17th and then you slide down and then a down stroke on the 16th this is a little uncomfortable here you can use it with one finger but I would play with these two so slide down with the ring finger and switch to the middle finger here on the G string and then back to the 17th with an up stroke down on the 16th pull off to the 14th and then down stroke on the 14th of the G and then back to the 16th with an up stroke and then end it with a down stroke on the 14th that's the lick and the next bar starts from the 16th you bend up half a note and you want to hit that pinched harmonic there it's a little tricky and then up stroke or down stroke I feel that it's closer to an up stroke and then comes the sweepy kind of thing and the way that it sounds like Dimebag is that if before you would start you already make some pick noise there just be a little more aggressive and have a little less tip of the pick it starts with an upstroke and it's all the way it's just an arpeggio only on the 14th fret and it with an upstroke on the 16th so before you would start you already put the edge of the pick there just be a little more aggressive and then it would make that sound this 
esports needs the attitude. So don't just play it fast, but play it like if you mean it. So you do the tremolo picking, start with the downstroke. I actually start with an upstroke, but only for the slide up. It's an upstroke. And the interesting part comes at the end. And this would look like this. You start with a downstroke and then make a muted 15th, both on the on the B and the, and the E string. It's more of a noise there again. And then you go to the 16th and the 17th, slide up, a half note. And from now on, it's the ghost notes are downstroke and everything is upstroke. And then the downstroke and up you start it again, but instead of the, the 18th, you go from half a note higher and then you bend that note up one and a half note This part was actually doubled in the studio. He was using some sort of harmonizer or maybe the, the octave function or the whammy. I believe it's a harmonizer. So I'll show you a way on how to play it without uh, a pedal and still sound right. You start with the palm muted open string. Slide up on the A string to the seventh. Pinched harmonic. And then on the D5 all downstrokes and then go back to the A6. The last note you can vibrate and then you repeat but instead of the fifth you go up with the pinky to the eighth fret on the D string and instead of the sixth now you end up on the seventh on the A. So together you don't have to play it up here. To me, it's in itself, it sounds a little weak, so it really needs uh, that lower octave there. That's why I start playing it here. But if you have the whammy or a harmonizer, you can do it here all the way. Okay, so next, the jazzy part. It's the rhythms again uh, that you put in it, the, the rests, the pauses. And it's just a uh, sequence that it's being repeated. So it's down, down, up, and then legato. You start on the seventh uh, position, eighth fret on the B string, down, down, up on the seventh, and then hammer on to the tenth, and pull off to the seventh. And repeat this half a note lower. And then you end it on the 9th and after that play it on the 14th fret you bend it up approximately a half a note and add the pinch harmonic twice and then you go half a note higher it's again attitude So this lick starts with the same pattern, like the classic and legendary Cowboys from Hell solo part, this one. Which is a mixture of alternate picking and legatos. You start on the 13th fret of the G string with the down stroke and then up on the 14th and down on the 17th. These are the notes. Down, up, down, up, legato. And you repeat this twice and then you repeat the same sequence just one string higher on the B string and then last but not least this part starts with an upstroke now on the 13th fret of the E string and then you go back to the B string 14th fret with the downstroke and hammer on to the 17th. Repeat it twice. 
so together. And then at the end is the same. And then from the 17th, you bend up one and a half note, adding the B string. With the tremolo picking, and the very end is the same one and a half note up from the 19th fret, adding the B string. With an attitude. And that's about it. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something from it. And if so, and if you liked what you hear and see, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell because there's a lot of videos which I'm uploading weekly. And also you can become a member at my Patreon site and have all these backing tracks in standard tunings and other exclusive contents. And if you have any questions or suggestions, just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I would be happy to answer them all. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Ciao.